Welcome to the Business Blueprint Podcast, where we take you on an exciting adventure through our triumphs and challenges and failures in creating and maintaining a thriving six, seven, and eight-figure business. Get ready to dive into our strategies, decisions, and yes, even valuable lessons we've learned from our missteps. That's not all. We'll also bring you industry-leading guests who will provide you with their priceless insights and wisdom. Stay tuned because the captivating journey of the Business Blueprint begins right now. Hi. I'm Charles Hatley, and this is The Business Blueprint, where each week we get together and we talk about things that we see happening around us, things that are occurring in our business that we just want to share with you, or sometimes things that we're interested in and we we may not know everything about, but we just want to get together and talk about. So today, Dan and I are going to talk about a little bit, just bouncing back and forth about what we see happening in business, what kind of things that we see every day. And, you know, for me, maybe what kind of things annoy me that that I see every day. But, you know, to get started, Dan, one of the questions that I I wanted to talk to you as we see all of this turmoil worldwide and we see these these, you know, economic indicators that show that we should be heading to a recession, but we're not heading to a recession. What do you see as far as small businesses are concerned for 2024? That's a good question. And it depends on the on the service of the business, right, Mm -hmm. because there's opportunities that are out there for companies to grow but then there's also businesses that are just kind of i don't want to use the word stuck but they're not necessarily thinking outside the box and anytime that recession comes up or we're talking about just even a a downturn in a market or a potential uh downturn in the in the company it all goes back to really just keeping your eye on the ball for your company what i mean by that is on the financials and I was just talking with a, a CPA uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, he, he wrote a book, and oh. and it's all about just forecasting and, and making sure that you're staying up with current trends and making sure that your company has enough cash to be able to to weather through some of these uh, hard times. And if you're talking about a recession, it's it's kind of a scary word to think about. And companies sometimes don't necessarily always think the bigger picture of next year. They're more focused on what's going on now, but if we have concerns on any type of downturn in in any market, we need to first look inward and say, okay, where am I at with cash in in the bank? Because it all starts there. That's what's going to help us weather through whatever storm it is, whether it's internal, external, or both. And really a good rule of thumb, depending upon what growth you're projecting or the size of your company, you really want to have anywhere from 10 to 30% of cash in the bank of your your revenue. And that's just going to be based on what the goals of the, the company are. But as far as if we're looking into next year and we're thinking there's a recession, I would say right now for any company that's out there, regardless if you're small or large, look and, and see, is there something that you can expand your services on? Is there something that maybe you're not offering that that others um, are that you could do better or something that you can do different? There's a, a book called The Blue Ocean Strategy. It's all about just creating a market for yourself, right? It's not, I got to be the best and I'll beat my competitors. It's, okay, what can I carve out that maybe is a niche or something I can do a little bit differently or even better that would put me ahead? And when we can think of other opportunities that are out there, that helps bring in that that stream of revenue so you can weather any type of storm. Or if you're if you know when you're asking about a recession, let's look inward and see where am I at with staffing? Am I at a good place where I can weather this? Or do I need to think bigger picture if there are going to be any potential layoffs? What's that going to look like once we get out of the recession and the ramp up period? So there's a lot of factors that really go in. But I I would say it starts with let's see where we're at with the bank and how much cash we have in there. And then what what other opportunities are out there that we can try to take advantage of and capitalize on that can help weather through whatever type of issue or recession may be on the horizon. And I know that that was a huge question, right? You know, what do you see coming for 2024? And oh, by the way, there's a presidential election to throw in there as well. Uh, you know, I really like the blue ocean strategy for, for many reasons, but one of the, the quotes or it, maybe not quote, but the sections of the blue ocean strategy, they talk about commoditizing your services and it's just a race to the bottom, right? Like you said, you have to look at the services you offer and, and think about your, your client's needs, because even in a recession, there's going to be people that want to avail themselves of your services if you're offering something that, that piques their interest. Um, and I was listening to the radio this morning on, on my drive into work and they were talking about an auction that happened and somebody paid like $770,000 for the piece of wood that 
was using the Titanic that they floated on. Somebody paid five hundred thousand dollars for the Indiana Jones whip that was used in the movie. Somebody paid three hundred thousand dollars for the Bill oh, Murray my. bowling ball that they used in um, the Bill Murray bowling movie. So people have money to spend. Uh, it, it's just, are you attracting them to spend the money with you? Uh, another thing that you brought up, which was really interesting, talking about staffing. You know, I, I read that the average raise this year was down. So from last year to this year, it went down to 3.9% total raise, including comp increase and cost of living adjustments. How do you put out of your mind that maybe there's going to be a recession coming and still give the team members that are you're working with a fair compensation increase? It starts with having open and honest discussion with your, your team. And, and, and it's from the beginning. And something that we're working on internally is the employee review process. And it doesn't have to be so archaic to where it's just it's a form. You fill out a rating or a letter, whatever your company is using. And then it goes back to the manager. They may or may not add comments to it. Sit down with the employee and then you move on. It, it should be a fluid situation in the sense that the review should be happening in one-on-ones as far as What's going on? What can I help you out? What do you need? Here's where we're at as far as uh, timelines for projects. Here are some deadlines. Here's what I think that's coming up. And then uh, monthly meetings with employees to really kind of look back as on the prior month, what happened. And then quarterly meetings just to see, okay, are we on pace for our goals? Do we need to pivot? Do we need to change anything? And in, and in these meetings, it's talking about just the company's progress and, and even tie in the market because it's going to have an effect as far as what are you charging for your service, whether you need to increase your hourly rate or you need to increase the price of any type of commodity that you're selling. Or if you're not um, on pace for the revenue that you want, what is it that we can do differently or better? What we've been discussing, that blue ocean theory as far as what, what else can we offer? And so there really should just be conversations throughout the year. So when that comp review time does come, it, it, you've had these open and honest discussions as far as here's where the company is, here's where we really need to be, here's maybe where we missed, but yet we may have gained on this side. And just having those frank and open discussions as far as what an average uh, potential comp would look like. So in the employee's mind, they don't come in with unrealistic expectations because an employee is always going to want the, the, the most that they can get, whether it's you know double digit increase or even more, they're never going to be satisfied. But if you have frank discussions and, 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 and you are really bringing them in and part of the process, then it, it hopefully will uh, educate them a little bit more and, and allow them to understand, okay, this is where we're at and, and this is where I see that the national average would be and here's where I fit within there and here's where my company fits. So when it, because those conversations are hard and it's uncomfortable for everybody. I've been doing reviews for myself and for our team members for a, a long time and, and I still get uncomfortable about it because no one likes to talk about money. Everyone likes to receive money, but it's always hard for most people to ask for money, myself included. I'm the worst advocate for myself. But <laughs> at the end of the day, it's making sure that we have these frank discussions with our employees so they're not caught off guard. So they know that it, we we have been thoughtful and methodical and we want to invest in our employees. And it doesn't always boil down to compensation too. One of the things I know that we're doing is really investing in our team members. And that's not just something that we say, it's really part of our values. We want to be able to invest in them to help them grow and hopefully grow within our company or within your company, if, wh whoever's listening says, if it's a law firm or other type of business, but you want them to succeed because once they succeed and they feel, they feel that fulfillment and, and they get inspired and motivated, it's just going to help your company. So I, I think it really just boils down to keeping that open line of dialogue with the employee. And that's not just performance based of the employee, it's performance based of the team they're on, of the company, and just continue moving those conversations forward. Absolutely. And, you know, you talk about investing in advancement for each team member. And, you know, I, I think it is, you know, when, you, when you're in a company, you say, well, how can I invest in my team to get better at the job that they have? Um, and, you know, there are some investment opportunities that, you know, I see for people that aren't worth it. You know, they say, well, let me go get this certification. I'm like, why? You know, go get a certification on how to play a guitar. You know, it's the same thing. But you might be happier playing the guitar. So maybe it actually is going to be beneficial to us as a company if you have a good stress relief like the guitar. Uh -huh. and, 
you know, one of the ideas that I've been kicking around is just a across the board amount of money that says you can go and do whatever you want with this amount of money, learn whatever you want, you know, just, just make it something, learn, grow. And, you know, the idea being that, you know, as, as an employer, no matter how much we want to be a destination career, the average length of employment in the country has gone down since COVID. It went from like 4.5 to 4.1 years. It's the acknowledgement that maybe we're not the best fit for people. You know, maybe we're just passing ships in the night and, you know, we work together for a little bit and you go on to something greater. But because we truly took the time to invest with you, you know, you are going to become an advocate for, for us. And, you know, as you talk about, you know, coming out of recessions that, you know, ramping back up may be hard. If you have advocates out there who, who, are, who mm -hmm. are promoting your company, it makes it a lot easier. But another interesting thing with the review that you talked about, you know, this year we tested out with Rebecca and I sending out an anonymous review form for people to review us across the entire organization. It was a good test. And that's what I will say. It was a good first step. You know, people had some really good feedback. Uh, it was completely anonymous. Sometimes I wish things weren't anonymous because people had very specific feedback. And I'm like, if I knew who this was, I could fix the problem that you said. <laughs> if you would just tell me your name, I could go fix this problem. But, you know, sometimes as I am want to do, I can't fix every problem. Sometimes people don't want you to fix the problem. They just want you to listen. Um, and another thing you brought up with, was data. You know, how fast can we get data back and forth? You know, you're talking about productivity. You're talking about a changing tide. The more we, we, we become comfortable with data, the quicker we can see this. So can you kind of explain to us what you're doing with data without having a billion dollars to spend on data analysts approach like a Google or a Microsoft? Sure. And it depends on, on your company, but I, your point's well taken. And data applies across the board. And the it's kind of the more you know, the better off you're going to be because knowledge is power. And you use that power to make business decisions. And you don't want to be behind the eight ball as much as you can. And it allows us to be more proactive. And, and sometimes with data, even though you get it in real time, it's still from uh, actions that have already happened. Mm -hmm. But you can use that data to forecast. And that's where you really become a little bit more proactive. One of the things that I've been working on, and, and this is from a law firm uh, perspective, is looking at what we have is the standard hourly rate of an attorney, but then looking at what is their average rate and what is their effective rate, because that tells us if their billable requirement is X, right? Um, we'll just call it our billable requirements, 1400. Their billable requirements, 1400, but yet their average rate is lower than what they're billing out. They're going to have to work harder just to get to to those billable amounts so we can hit the revenue. So that's something internally that that would tell me, okay, is do we need to provide more training? Is there something broken in the process that's slowing things down? Or are we just not bringing in the right clientele? So there's just a lot of things that we can learn just based upon looking at trends. And that's the, the I think one of the biggest advantages of data is, are show me some trends that are going on because if I'm trending upward, great, but there's maybe some levers or something I need to tweak that can allow me to even propel more or allow us to grow at maybe a, a greater rate? Or am I seeing a trend going the wrong way, but I want to get ahead of it well in advance before something happens and it's either too late or we're having to make some drastic decisions that isn't in the best interest of the company. Mm -hmm. And using this data and then providing it to your leadership team and even just your, your team members based upon whatever that data is and how much you, you feel that you can share allows everybody to have a better understanding of where we're at and what they need to do. I'm always a big proponent of sharing as much data as possible because there's others in the on my team that may have an idea that I didn't think of or more likely than not have better ideas than what I came up with or a better way to do something. So it's always just keeping the employee engaged. The more engaged an employee is, I feel the more motivated they'll be. But then also then you get to inspire. And, and, and it's so fun and cool to see when someone you've been managing all of a sudden just clicks, right? And they get it. And then they have all these just amazing ideas that you've been kind of leading them down that path and then showing them the data and having them use the data to really run with it allows me to be better at, at my job, quite frankly, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I, I love data. And you talked about it in the world of, of law firms. My first experience with, with data was at a steel tubing manufacturer. Um, you know, what we looked at was how many tube feet could run per minute. And out of that, how accurate was the run? So how much had to be thrown away because you messed up? 
Um, and you know, what I learned very quickly at, at a very young age, when I was trying to become a manager is to talk to the people that were running the tube mills and say, come on, man, what's going on? Can you explain it to me? And rather than jump in and say, look, you guys could turn up the speed on this tube mill by 15%, get, you know, they, they, they told me that, yeah, I can do that, but we're going to run through blades and it's going to increase the actual cost of this run, or it's going to cause a, you know, more breakdowns in the machine because they had 25 or 30 years of experience using that particular machine that was more valuable for me to go talk to them first and say, hey, if you run this machine at this percentage speed, what's going to happen? And mm -hmm. what we did was we actually sat down together. And, and like you said, when you see the realization of, you know, if I could turn this machine up by 7%, it would not have the error rate and we would not have the over usage rate and we would increase productivity by, by this. Um, and it's the same thing with, with the attorneys, right? You know, you could talk about billing 500 hours a week on one case, but the person couldn't pay. Nobody could pay those bills. So there's an effective rate to look at your caseload, say, what can I do? I don't want to bill too much because I don't want to be making mistakes. I don't want to bill more than what the client can pay for. Just like mm -hmm. steel tubing, we don't want to run more than what the client needs. Um, right. And, you know, being data driven for me starts at understanding what the position is. And I think sometimes in law firms, we kind of have a cheat to that because a lot of us were lawyers first, right? We, we were there. We were like, hey, we were there. But in other industries, how important it is to communicate, which you talked about, having that open line of, of communication always in, in this approach. Um, so when you're looking at, at data and you're talking about how much to share, have you come across where the it's like almost a detriment to share too much? And what is an example of a detriment of, of a share? I... I would go back to trends, although you want to share what you're seeing, but sometimes depending upon who you're talking to and the role that that employee plays, they may take that as a negative, even though it may be a, a, a negative trend, but they may think, okay, oh my gosh, we're trending the wrong way. This company's going down. I need to get out. And then you're just kind of going down. Oh, you're, the train's off the tracks at that time. There's no way you're getting that train back on the track. So it's knowing your audience, right? Who you're speaking to, but then the delivery as well. So if, if you have a, if you're trending in the wrong direction, mm -hmm. it's more of, okay, what can we do to get back on track here? I'm seeing over the past couple of months that our production is down or the hours are down or we're not selling as much. What's going on? That really, I, I like to use those types of opportunities as a conversation to be able to say, okay, what can we do differently? What can we do better? Or let's dig in and get very granular because maybe it's something, it's a breakdown in the process mm -hmm. and it's something that's easily fixed, but without the data and without the trends, we never would have known. As much as I love and I'm a big fan of positive trends, sometimes I feel that leaders and companies and firms just ignore everything else because like, oh, we're moving in the right direction. Everything is, is okay. I'm always, well, that's great, but what, what's allowing us to continue to move that way? What is something else that we can change to maybe uh, increase the hours or increase what we're selling or bring in more clients? So uh, even though you have training one way or training in a, in a better way, it's always a good idea just to look and see what's allowing that or causing that to, to happen. And then maybe it is an easy fix or maybe it's something that we need to look more internally to determine who do we need to bring on board? Do we need to hire another team member? Do we need to hire an, another uh, attorney if you're a law firm? Because you want to, it all goes back to taking the data, taking the trends, and then the conversations to allow us to be able to forecast whether you're hiring more salespeople, whether you're, you're hiring another attorney. Because you want to look usually 60 to 90 days ahead once you are, are really digging into the data. And then you just keep that process going so it's real fluid. So it's not as if you have your, your monthly meeting and then you look 90 days and you wait. Okay, so here we are. We're, we'll call it April. So June, July, right? You know, okay, now we'll look again. No, it's okay. In May, where are we at in the next 90 days? Where are we at? Just It's continuously looking ahead. So you're staying ahead of any trends and you can identify any issues ahead of time, which all goes down to the bottom line of revenue, expenses, and then cash. And, you know, I, I want to thank you uh, for talking about this and joining us for part one of kind of this open forum of where we see 2024 going and, and how we, we plan on tackling any, any difficulties that we may have. Uh, you know, join us next time for part two. And Dan and I will continue this conversation and we're going to pick up talking about KPIs. Um, so, again, thank you. If you like what we talked about today, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll talk to you next time.
Hi, this is Dan Cuneo with The Business Blueprint. Thank you for taking time to listen to this week's podcast. Please join us next week for part two. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this insightful and entertaining, be sure to hit subscribe below and join us on social media to get more insight into what we are going through each and every day.